three power play goals against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me Timo. Shut your mouth. Timo Meyer. And Jesper Bratt is the best player in the NHL. Maybe not to that extent, but he's definitely been consistent. Boy, I have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Hey, at least the Devils performed well against the Maple Leafs. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Chalky, play play announcer, Devils driver for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. Okay, first and foremost, the New Jersey Devils won the season series against the Toronto Maple Leafs two games to one. To add on to that, both of their wins came on the road in Toronto, which is not an easy thing to do. However, on the flip side of that, this game means nothing for the Devils because I would like to say that this is a big win, but what do they get out of it? They have literally nothing to gain because in the previous matchup against the Maple Leafs yet again, because this was a home-and-home series, the Maple Leafs ended the Devils' season by beating them at the Prudential Center, which made the Devils mathematically eliminated from playoff contention. This is uncharted territory for me because I believe for the first time in two years, I am doing a post-game recap episode. And despite the win, I want to be excited. I want to be happy. But it's just like, what do the Devils get out of this? Because I said in my previous post-game recap episode that the Devils are playing for draft position. And as we all know, you basically got to lose a lot of games if you want to grain your probability of getting a higher draft position. But we'll definitely talk about that in the next week or so because the Devils are down to their final two games of the season against the Philadelphia Flyers and the New York Islanders. I can't believe the season is almost drawing close to an end, and it, it definitely leaves me a little frustrated. But let's focus on the positives because the Devils – beat the Maple Leafs 6-5 to five in an absolute barn burner in Toronto. And I got to be honest, I did not anticipate for the game to go down this certain avenue where the Devils basically outscore the Maple Leafs, who are considered a powerhouse team in the NHL. Got Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, William Nylander, Tyler Bertuzzi has been performing well against the Devils. It's It was definitely an interesting game, but... It was an exciting one that was led by Timo Meyer on the power play and also Jesper Bratt coming up clutch in the third period. In the first segment, I will share some of my main takeaways from the game. We'll talk about Max Domi dropping the mitts against Shimon the Mets and my thoughts on the matter. And then in the second segment, like I do after every postgame recap victory, I will give you guys my three stars of the game. And then in the third and final segment, I will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. Before I share my main takeaways, I just want to say that the Devils kind of made one of my predictions come true because a few weeks ago, I was mapping out the rest of the schedule for the Devils, and I said, okay, they got to play the Maple Leafs twice more. They can drop one of those matchups, but they got to win the other one, and lo and behold, they beat the Maple Leafs two games to one this season, and I don't know why these three games were played towards the end of the season, very close to one another. This scheduling has been weird because the Devils were uh, playing a lot of back-to-back games early on, and there seemed to be a lot of off days in between. But anyway, that's a tangent for another time. In this game, it reminded me of the cameo song, Back and Forth, Back and Forth, because w- whatever the Maple Leafs did, the Devils could do better. John Tavares, he got the party started for the Maple Leafs, right out the gate because they scored within the first, what, 20 seconds. And then Eric Halla, 20 seconds after that, tied the game one apiece. I got to be honest with you, when the captain for the Maple Leafs made it a one to nothing game, I was just going down that rabbit hole saying, oh boy, here we go again. 
Devils go down one to nothing. And this is going to be a long night for them because the Maple Leafs, they're going to the playoffs. They want to get as much momentum as they can. And then the Devils, they really have nothing to prove unless you're trying to make a name for yourself, similar to like Nolan Foote. But the Devils uh, answered on back as quickly as they possibly could because Austin Matthews, uh, I believe about five or so minutes later, he netted his 67th goal of the season. And then the Devils ended the first period with the lead thanks to Nolan Foote playing some decent defense and having a nice backhand shot. And then Timo Meyer on the power play ripped one, making it a three to two game for the Devils. And here's the thing. I wanted to give the Devils the benefit of the doubt, but I put this out on social media. The quintessential game for the Devils during the 2023-2024 season is that they go down one to nothing. They tie the game as quickly as they can. They get the lead. It seems like the momentum is shifting in their favor, but they let up the game tying goal and it snowballs for there. And that's how the script was sort of panning out for the Devils because in the second period, the Maple Leafs scored two unanswered goals. One of those goals belonged to Austin Matthews. And I got to be completely honest with you. I was worried that Austin Matthews was going to net his 70th goal on the Devils because it was still relatively early in the game. He already has two goals. If he can get that third goal early in the third period and then the Maple Leafs are still up, Devils pull, Jake Allen get the extra attacker, and then we sort of see a Tage Thompson situation pan out where Austin Matthews finishes with four goals. Luckily, that did not happen, but I got to be completely honest with you. Devils, not really a lucky team this year. And I don't know if I would be surprised or not surprised in this case, but luckily that was not what panned out. And Timo Meyer coming up clutch once again on the man advantage when there was like 10 or so seconds remaining in the second period, he tied the game for a piece. And if the second period was any indicator, we were in for a wild, wild competitive battle in the third period. And that's exactly what we got because both of the Devils' goals came at the hands of Jesper Bratt. He got the initial go-ahead goal, making it a 5-4 game. But then Tavares, similar to Matthews, he got his second goal of the evening. And then Jesper Bratt, when there was about, what, 90 or so seconds remaining in the game, two minutes in that ballpark, he was able to get his 27th goal of the season, putting the Devils up to a 6-5 lead because I had a strong feeling that this game was going to go into OT. Devils walk away with a 6-5 to victory. I'd say one of the main talking points that occurred throughout the course of the game was Max Domi dropping the Mets on not Brendan Smith, not Curtis McDermott, but Shimon the Mets, who prior to this game had never been in an NHL fight. What happened? Well, in the second period, Austin Matthews is trying to get control of the puck, and Shimon the Mets is sort of hounding him, using his stick to make sure that Austin Matthews does not get possession of the puck. Shimon the Mets is doing his job, but Austin Matthews, I guess he felt like Shimon the Mets was a little too close for comfort, or he felt like that the Mets wasn't really controlling his stick the best to his ability. And Austin Matthews gave him a couple of jabs, but who was there to actually make it a full-fledged fight? It was Domi. And it wasn't even a fight because I don't even think Shimon the Mets got one punch on Domi. And it was as soon as it started, it was over. And I saw something uh, funny happen on social media where Ryan Novozinski of NJ.com, he says that Shimon the Mets and uh, Max Domi went toe to toe with one another, but it was over rather quick. And Shimon the Mets goes down and Nova added and said, like, I don't think. Nemetz even threw a punch, and then someone responded to him and said, that wasn't a fight. Shimon Nemetz got jumped, to which Ryan Ovisinski responded and said, yep, because it it wasn't a fight. It really wasn't. But the thing is, is like, I don't think Shimon Nemetz was in the wrong there. I think you have to play that close to Austin Matthews because we saw it in this game. I literally told you guys, he scored two goals in this game, and he is trying to uh, get that coveted 70-goal mark And the Devils don't want to be that team that he gets 70 goals on. So it's just like similar to what I said a couple episodes ago, similar to what Can Danico said on the broadcast as well. 
you cannot leave Austin Matthews open, especially not in the slot. If you leave him open in the slot, that's a death sentence. Curtains, good night. And this was being played alongside the boards, and you still don't want to give him an inch of breathing room to operate because Austin Matthews is turning into a better two-way player, and he can also set up his teammates. Shimon the Mets was doing the right thing. Even if it wasn't the Mets, if it was like McDermott or Smith, I still don't think it justified for a fight. I really don't. But that's just my opinion. But if Domi felt the need to drop the gloves on McDermott or Smith, fine. Go ahead. Because Smith and McDermott are two of the bigger guys on the Devils roster. And they're known for being willing to take on a challenge. But Shimon the Mets, baby face Shimon the Mets, who turned 20 back in February, who had never been in an NHL fight prior to this game, and also just a soft-spoken, nice guy, not really known for being all that aggressive. Domi, like, have you ever heard of the phrase, pick on someone your own size, or why don't you pick on someone who maybe isn't afraid to fight like that? Because that seemed a little unfair to Shimon the Mets, but luckily Max Domi was punished accordingly because he was given an instigator. He was also given a fighting and he was given an instigator misconduct during that span. Shimon Metz was given a fighting penalty as well, but it wasn't really a fight once again. But that's just my opinion on the matter. And also, wasn't there a play down the stretch in which uh, Luke Hughes is down on the ground and Austin Matthews sort of nudges him to the side and Luke Hughes uh, mouthed the word, you effing female dog, something like that. Austin Matthews, he's a great player, but I don't think he can be victimized in this case. But still an exciting matchup, very exhilarating, back and forth, and did not anticipate that from the Devils. And they're not playing for anything, but I guess pride and draft position. But I'm glad that they walked away with something. And it kind of proves my point that I said a few weeks ago, which is in the marquee matchups, the Devils do somewhat decent, but they lose too many games to teams that they have no business of losing to. All right. I'm going to give you guys my three stars of the game momentarily. But before we continue, let me tell you about Game Time. I've actually used the Game Time app to purchase MLB and NBA tickets. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Trust me, I know. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select games ahead of game or an event. Take a guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. Before I name my three stars of the game. First, an honorable mention. I want to give an honorable mention to Nico Heischer because Erica Walker actually gave him a shout out during the third period in which she was talking about Nico Heischer's leadership and what he means to the team. Because this is something that I've been hammering home on this show when people say that he's not a good leader as shown on social media. Because people want, I guess, Nico to be sort of like Scott Stevens where He's aggressive. He's not afraid to tell how it is. He's not afraid to get in your face. Well, times have changed, and Nico Heischer and his leadership is a little different. Also, something that was mentioned on the telecast by Bill Spaulding is that he will grow into a more vocal role when that time comes because you got to remember, he's 25 years old. He's only a few months older than me. In 69 game appearances, he has 27 goals, 39 assists for a grand total of 66 points. He walked away with an assist in this matchup. Just want to give you guys that sort of background and opinion on Nico Heischer. I thought he was a good facilitator on the power play in this matchup. All right. My third star. I'm going to give it to Nolan Foote. Nolan Foote actually surprised me in this game, and I mentioned it in the first segment in which he was able to make the Maple Leafs cough up a turnover, and Nolan Foote, just a few feet away from the net, had a nice backhand shot. And Ilya Samsonov had no answer for it. And that was uh, Foote's first goal of the season. He was also tied with Jesper Bratt in the shots category with three. And there were a couple of times in which Foote 
was hanging in front of the net looking for that tip-in goal. And there was one particular moment on the power play, I believe, when it could have been a picturesque type of play. Unfortunately, it just skittered off of his twig and uh, he wasn't able to capitalize there and get his second goal of the game. But you, I just saw Nolan Foot be very smart out there. And considering the fact that it's been a very disappointing year for him with all the injuries he's encountered and the fact that he was supposed to be given a decent sized role coming into the season because Tom Fitzgerald talked about how he wanted to give people like Foot more chances to showcase his skill set. I think for Nolan Foot, it's definitely uh, a time period for him to showcase his skill set and show to the front office and coaching staff that he is capable of doing a lot more things. And that's a curse and blessing when your season is essentially over and you have no chance of contending for a playoff position. My second star, Jesper Brett, who carried the team in the third period because he got a couple of clutch goals. He got the initial go-ahead goal, giving the Devils a 5-4 to four lead on the power play. Then I said Tavares tied it up, but Jesper Bratt, once again, when time was winding down, coming up clutch for this team. And in 80 game appearances, Bratt has 82 points, which makes him a point-per-game player. And I've been seeing, similar to Nico Heischer's situation, just some interesting rumblings on social media where people were talking about Jesper Bratt being a ghost because there was a string of games a few weeks ago, maybe last month, where he wasn't having his best performance. And the one thing I could say about Jesper Bratt, he's been one of the more consistent players for the Devils, and he's now going to be uh, ending the season uh, at a point-per-game clip. He was an all-star. He was just bound to go on a cold streak. Everyone goes on a cold streak. Jack Hughes went on a cold streak. Nico Heischer went on a cold streak. Timo Meyer went on a cold streak. Everyone goes on a cold streak, some longer than others, but that was bound to happen. But Jesper Bratt has been one of the more consistent, electrifying, fast-paced players on this Devils roster. And you know what he did on his game-winning goal late in the third period? He basically shrugged off Joel Edmondson and kept on skating fast and got the shot he wanted. That should showcase what he's capable of doing because I said in my previous episode that Jack Hughes, the offense is built around him because Jack loves to play fast. He loves to set up his teammates. Jesper Bratt is sort of like that. Is he as good as Jack Hughes in that case? No, but Jesper Bratt is capable of doing a lot of great things. Case in point in this matchup against the Maple Leafs. My first star, I got to give it to Timo Meyer who has been going on a tremendous tear to close out the season, and he's been silencing a lot of his naysayers. Ryan Ovazinski recently spoke to Timo Meyer a couple days ago, and Novo shared this on social media. He said, Timo Meyer downplayed the role injuries had on his turbulent start to the 2023-2024 season, instead citing a role change and more communication under Travis Green as a reason for his boom. Meyer was quoted to say, Green has been great at communication with me and giving me direct feedback and working with me all year, then really giving me a chance and putting me in spots where I like being, where I feel like I can showcase what I can and trying to help the team have success. And I put out the numbers on social media. Ever since March 4th, that was the day Lindy Ruff got fired. Timo Meyer has racked up 14 goals, seven of them on the power play, nine assists for a grand total of 23 points in 19 games played. But I want to go back a little further. Yes, Travis Green, I'd say, has been utilizing Timo Meyer better. But the thing is, Timo Meyer, like I said, for the past month or so, has been putting up a lot of great production because in late February, I released an episode talking about the, the Timo Meyer trade in retrospective a year later because a lot of people were like, the trade wasn't worth it. He should have stayed in San Jose. The Sharks won the deal because they got Fabian Zetterlin. They got Nikita Holtuk. They got all these players. 
and they're doing somewhat decent or they're seeing their roles increase. And Timo Meyer has been a struggle. He has the worst contract in Devils history. And I released that episode in late February telling everyone to chill out on Timo Meyer because he is capable of doing so many great things. So going back to February 22nd, here's what Timo Meyer has done. 17 goals, seven of them on the power play, 12 assists for a grand total of 29 points in 25 games played. And keep in mind, Lindy Ruff was still the head coach. Do I think Travis Green has been doing a lot of great things with Timo and giving him a better role? Yes, absolutely. But despite Lindy Ruff maybe not using Meyer to the best of his abilities, playing him on the third line, not giving him the power play opportunities he deserves, maybe not putting him in the right lineup combination, whatever the case might be, I know Lindy Ruff maybe didn't use Timo correctly. And I think Timo likes Travis Green a lot more just based on communication. But I just want to make something perfectly clear. Timo Meyer has been doing this for a long period of time. And I hope this silences a lot of the naysayers because once again, thanks to Timo Meyer and Jesper Bratt, particularly on the power play, they led this Devils team to victory. And three power play goals in this game for Devils, they were doing that with these first couple months of the season. And it was refreshing to see them do it as the season is winding down. But hopefully they can maintain that consistency come next year. All right, we'll compare the stats, give the Devils a letter grade momentarily. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about Indeed, because speaking of Lindy Ruff, he might be searching for a new gig on Indeed. Indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you could do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who see it in search according to U.S. Indeed data. With Indeed, matching as soon as you sponsor a post, you can get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Boom, it's hiring at warp speed. I've actually used Indeed before to get myself some play-by-play -play gigs. Highly recommend it. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applicants that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Finally, Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing now available to everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right, let's compare the stats, give the Devils a letter grade, and get out of here and get ready for the end of the season even more. Shots on goal differential, 32-20 in favor of the Maple Leafs. While the scoreboard might not show it, Jake Allen was robbing the Maple Leafs a couple of times. The defense could have been a little bit better, but it, it's still a win. Face-off percentage, 51.7% to the Maple Leafs, 48.3% to the Devils. Power play, Devils were 3 for 4, 75%. Maple Leafs 0 for 3. Penalty minutes 23 to 11 in favor of the Maple Leafs. Hits 35 to 33 in favor of the Devils. Block shots 18 to 17 in favor of the Devils. Giveaways 13 to 12 in favor of the Devils. Takeaways 8 to 6 in favor of the Maple Leafs. It's a little difficult, but if I had to give the Devils a letter grade, because yes, this win was exhilarating. Yes, their power play came to play. It's not easy to win on the road in Toronto in front of a screaming fans shouting MVP for Austin Matthews or uh, basically being that electrifying. But it was still a gong show. It was still a barn burner, which is not, I would say, not the best quality of a win. But like I said, considering the circumstances, considering the fact that the Devils are still somewhat shorthanded, I will give them a C plus because they still performed really well. In terms of scoring, defense wasn't really all that good. I think Allen could be a little bit better, but it was solid, not spectacular, and I'll leave it at that. Let me know what you guys think. What did you think of the Nemets and Domi fight? Wasn't really a fight. What did you think of Timo Meyer and Jesper Bratt? And what do you think of Timo Meyer's surgeons to close out the year? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts, so leave a comment down below. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on podcast streaming service, Hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMath4 or the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for his episode, 
That's all the time I have for you. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.